In this video, we will see how to store data on a relational database using Common Lisp. We will go on with the web API we built in the previous video. So, if you haven't looking at it, I suggest you go and check it out first. We will connect to the database using CLSQL, which provides a common interface to multiple databases. In particular, we have chosen SQLite as a backend. We add CLSQL and CLSQL SQLite to the list of dependencies. You may also have to install the SQLite library on your system. The web API was split into packages, the to-do one in which we deal with the data storage and the to-do web API that actually starts the web server. We should be able to get a working web API with SQLite touching only the to-do package. We have to implement the three functions that deal with the to-do list using SQL. We will use this macro to connect to the database. It is a wrapper around with database that sets the database type, in this case SQLite, and the path for the connection. We could write directly SQL as a string. This is the suggested approach if you want complete control over your query. However, most of the time, you can use a domain-specific language provided by CLSQL. The advantage is that the language protects us from common SQL injection attack, and, moreover, the query will be a list, so it will be easier to build them dynamically. Finally, everything looks like common Lisp. The first query we have to run is the create table. We just need a single table with three attributes, the ID, the description, and the done flag. SQLite doesn't have a boolean type, so we have to use an integer instead. ID will be the primary key, which is auto-increment. We run this function to create the database. Now we start to actually write the API logic. The first is the addToDo function. We can compare the previous implementation with the current one. From a certain point of view, it is much simpler. It is just a single query. We insert into the to-do's table the value provided as parameter to the function. The attribute keyword are the name of the attribute in the database, while the values is the name of the variable in the parameters. The first one is a quoted list, while the other takes the value of the symbols. Then we have the to-do's to array function. This is the old one, and we can see that the new one is quite similar. The main difference is that instead of reading a variable, we get the list from a select to the database. One may think that reading all the results of the query inside memory is not a good practice, and you would be right. But the biggest problem is that we are reading all the content of our table inside memory. We should implement some kind of pagination, but for the moment we leave it as it is. At least now we have persistence. We can see that using the domain-specific language, the query is quite similar to the string we would have written if we wrote the SQL directly. Finally, we need the update function. Again, we can use the domain-specific language. In this case, the main issue is the way we have to write the where clause. CSQL provides a better solution. Until now, we have only seen regular macros that are expanded during the evaluation of a form. In Common Lisp, it's possible to change the syntax of the language using the reader macros. We have to load the macros provided by CLSQL. To do this, we run this command directly inside the Lime mini buffer using Ctrl C, Ctrl E, and passing the form. And now the previous function becomes much easier. The idea is that brackets are not used inside Common Lisp, so CSQL can give them a meaning. Finally, we can start again the server and verify that everything works as expected. At the beginning, the list is empty. Then we add a new to-do. We can verify that now we can see it. We set it as done. And we verify that the update was successful. Let me know in the comments if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe.